The key thing, we want to make sure that everyone is very safe when they're taking their water samples. Um, so I guess the things to look out for is where you can safely access the water in this area. Now importantly, it doesn't need to be precisely where this bridge is. If there's safer areas, a couple of hundred metres up or downstream, you're welcome to, to try that. Um, but just look for banks that aren't too steep that you can get down. Um, things to be careful of are things like crumbling banks, uh, unstable ground, slippery rocks and mud around waterways. Typical things like snakes and, and insect stings when you're outside. Um, also make sure that you're dressed appropriately, so particularly long pants, sturdy shoes, um, a pair of gaiters if you like, um, and also a hat and sunglasses if the conditions are, are, are require it. Um, and when you're at your site, don't forget to look up as well and look for um, trees or limbs that have the potential to fall on you. So the key thing is make sure that you're safe when you're doing this. If anything looks like it's potentially a hazard, we don't want you to take a sample here. So safety is our number one concern. So one of the key things to remember is we're not to enter the water. This is both a, a safety aspect, but also it prevents contamination of samples. So we've made it safely down to the water, now it's time to get ready and take our water sample. So you will have received a package that'll look something like this that'll have your sampling kits in it. So everything you need to sample at a particular site is contained within this packet. So I'll just open it up and get everything out and ready. So within each of these packs you'll have a, a large syringe which is used to sample the water, a pair of gloves which is helping to minimise contamination, and importantly these round things which are our disc filters that we're going to use to filter the water and capture all of our DNA, and then two smaller syringes that have a little bit of preservative in them that we're going to use at the end. Okay, you'll have a site code that will be provided to you, so please make sure you're recording that site code precisely because we need to know where these samples have come from the date that you're taking the sample, the name of the waterway if, if you know it, and then just stick your name on it so that we know who's taken the sample and if we need to get in contact with any questions we can get back to you. So first of all I'll get suited up, I'll get these gloves on, And then because we've got two filters, I want to be able to label them so we know which one's what. So I'm going to have a, a one and a two on those filters. Make them nice and obvious and, and easily readable for the, for the lab team. So with our large syringe, what we're going to do is just draw some water directly out of the, the waterway. As much as possible, we want to avoid any sediment that's been stirred up and any algae that's in the water because that's going to clog our filter. And importantly, what we need to do is record the volume of water that we're filtering. So I'm going to adjust this filter to 50 mils and keep track of, of how many syringes I'm using. Then with our filter, the wide end of the filter just screws onto the top of the syringe, only about half a turn, and that's really secure. And then we just want to force that water through the filter. So the stuff that comes out is actually quite clean water. All of our good stuff, all of our DNA, all of our cells is getting trapped in this filter. And this is going to slowly turn a bit brown and get a bit clogged up. And then we just repeat that until we can't get any more water through. So I'll take another 50 mils, screw the, syringe, the filter back on and push that through. Now, there is no fixed amount of water that we need to attempt to get. It's just as much water as we can get through um, without sort of forcing it too much. So the more water we can filter, the better chance we've got of, of picking up any DNA that's in the water. So we'll just keep going until we can't get any more water through that filter. And it's already starting to get quite tough. It's clogging up that filter and it's really becoming a bit of a strain now. Okay, so that's about as far as I can get here. So I've done almost three syringes full, so that was 140 mils. Now the last thing we want to do is just get rid of any excess water that's in this filter, so I'm just going to fill up this syringe with air, screw it back on one final time and just squeeze out those last few little droplets of water. And then we're done, we've taken our first sample and then at the end I'm going to add a little bit of preservative, but first I'm going to take our second sample, repeat that process again, and then we'll finish up the filters at the end. So now I've got our sample that's finished, I've got rid of any water that's in this filter, 
Then we're just going to add this preservative. So this is going to help preserve our sample before it gets to the lab, stop any DNA degradation. So all we need to do is just uncap this little syringe, screw it onto the filter like we did with the, the large one, and then just very gently add that preservative. It's going to fill up that filter. A little bit might dribble out, that's fine. And then we're going to add the cap onto the end of that filter to seal it all. The syringe stays attached, so that whole filter and syringe goes into the packet and then we're going to record the volume that we filtered for each of our filters on this um, and send that back to the lab.